From bees dancing to communicate, to sea creatures flashing lights. These are surprising ways animals communicate with each other. You'd think that the way animals talk to each other was known centuries ago. But guess what? The way bees communicate was discovered in the 1970s. Carl von Frisch discovered how bees would dance their way through socializing with each other. Long story short, if a bee wants to warn its friends or tell them to pick up the pace when making honey, it gets the message across through detailed movement and motion. You'd think that buzzing is their language, but that's just for pollination. But just because their means of communication is dancing doesn't mean they start doing the macarena out of nowhere. Every move of this insect carries crucial information. Bees signal each other only when something honey or nectar related needs to be said, so that's why the speed and direction of their groove play a part. You'd also be surprised to know that these insects aren't the only ones that dance their way to the queen bee's heart. The Australian peacock spider also tap dances with its eight legs to find a partner that will take care of its eggs. The Clark's grebes also dance to take their love story to the next level. Another fun fact about them is that they can run on water for up to 20 seconds with their mates. Talk about dancing their way to her heart. But dancing is suitable for small animals like insects, right? What about bigger ones? Well, African elephants use infrasound to communicate with their herd. Imagine something that big tap dancing to tell them that water is on the other side of the field. It looks crazy, doesn't it? Elephants use infrasound to communicate. Infrasound is when those frequencies are too low for the human ear to detect. We listen at frequencies between 20 and 20,000 hertz, while elephants emit sounds of around 15 to 35 hertz. The trumpet sounds from an elephant may sound like slight murmurs to us, but to them, they're just the right vibrations to understand who's honking their trunk. The frequencies are so low that for all we know, elephants could be talking in coherent sentences. Now, elephants are technically gigantic animals, right? It's pretty interesting to see how the frequencies they emit are as low as a few hertz. Wait till you check this little guy out. Unlike elephants, tarsiers use ultrasound. Yes, you heard that right. These tiny things are just 5 inches tall, but communicate over 20,000 hertz. 70,000 hertz to be exact. These high-pitched exchanges could be to warn others about a possible predator, a mating call, or to tell each other about water or food. Who knew something so tiny could be so lethal? Meanwhile, there are smaller creatures deep underground that don't have strong larynxes to scream at 70 kilohertz frequencies. The African demon mole rat not only has the most metal name for an animal, but it also has a metal way to communicate with other rats underground. These critters use thumping as a way to talk to their friends. Since these rats live underground deep in the tunnels of East Africa, they can't squeak their way through the labyrinth, so they bang their little heads against walls. Metal, right? The rhythmic thumps carry a different message each time. Think of it like the Morse code of the underground. Like many other animals, messages may be about the environment, food, or potential threats lurking nearby. Thumping is also a really good stealth mechanism. If demon mole rats used vocalized communication like other animals, they'd easily be detected by larger predators nearby. Being a tiny animal in the wild is already tough. Why would they make their lives harder? The signaling system keeps communication underground because, believe it or not, vibrations travel way further than you might think. It's effective, hidden, and easily detectable by fellow mole rats. Now, let's compare these to the next few animals that use actual voices to talk. The dioles are Asiatic wild dogs that look a little bit like foxes and wolves. They usually live in packs of 5 to 12, and by the look of them, you'd think they bark or howl. Guess again. They whistle, cluck, and shriek through 35 square miles of land. But it gets wilder, because these screams aren't for updating each other about the environment. They actually orchestrate coordinated attacks on prey with them. Animals of different sizes using different means of communication is never not fascinating because gorillas, at first glance, would probably roar and scream at each other, right? Well, some of them lightly hum. Yes, the dominant silverback gorilla uses their melodic hums to call the shots during mealtime and to show, well, dominance. The humming is also used to get with the gorilla ladies out in the jungle as a mating call. And to think that beasts of this caliber would be roaring at the top of their lungs. To list more animals under the humming, roaring, screaming, and screeching category, perhaps the smartest way of communicating is by prairie dogs. The burrow-dwelling squirrels don't shout, but have a diverse set of words that serve as a sophisticated alarm system. This means that if they want to warn other dogs about an incoming threat, they have to make a specific call for it. They have a different call for when they approach something else, like a human. On top of that, scientists discovered that they can distinguish between predator and ally, not by their menacing presence but by the color and speed of their movement. 
How can something so small and cute have a brain that big? To top the screaming scoundrels of nature off, we have the seahorse, who, despite their size, growl in the face of danger. This is their attempt at startling predators, because even humans would be surprised that a creature this tiny can growl at us. This brief period of startling the predators gives them just the right amount of time to make a quick escape. How about we switch gears and talk about an animal that uses something non-vocal, non-ultrasound, and non-thumping to communicate? Take a wild guess at how rhinos talk. Go on, I'll give you all the time you need. Time's up! White rhinos use the unconventional method of communicating through communal dung heaps. Yes, dung is the fancy word. The fancier word for these heaps of trash talk is middens. Evolution wasn't kind in their eyes, but their sense of smell is very, very strong. I mean you do need a strong nose to carry that huge horn that gets in the way of your peripherals, right? The way this works is that rhinos can differentiate between types of bio-waste left by both comrades and competitors. This doesn't mean that they're dirty animals that don't care about their waste. Rhinos regularly revisit and refresh the middens to keep their environment clean. It's also important to have the smells mixing up with incoming threats from other predators. So, if there was a herd of rhinos marching their way from one land to another, don't think of their bathroom breaks as bathroom breaks. Think of them as a bulletin board where different rhinos have different business cards. You know, because they're doing their business out in the open. But wait! It gets cooler. Dominant rhinos mark their territory and hierarchy by leaving their dunk in the center and spreading their scent by carrying it on their feet as a mobile signature. Okay, that's kinda gross, don't you think? I, for one, wouldn't take someone with waste on their feet seriously. Apart from social hierarchies, potential threats, and mating, middens are also used to communicate important information about each individual's health. This includes reproductivity and health too. Talk about a weird social media platform. So, the next time you're out in the wild and you enter an area that smells very pungent, beware. You just commented on the funny rhino's hilarious joke that he posted online. Let's delve underwater for a change, because that seahorse growl wasn't enough information to surprise you. Perhaps one of the craziest forms of communication is shown by the mantis shrimp. These guys have 16 color receptors in their eyes, and get this, they're not used just for seeing things, they use polarized light to exchange messages with other shrimp. So, the anatomy lesson here is that mantis shrimps use their maxillipeds, which are distinct appendages with sensitive blue spots, to bounce light off and create a message that another shrimp can see. To make it even more confusing, this whole thing isn't just light reflecting back and forth, it's about scattering different colors and wavelengths and arranging them in intricate patterns across their bodies. Like the underground Morse code shown by the African demon mole rats, mantis shrimps use flashing lights as a similar form of communication. Other marine life that uses flashing lights and changing colors are cephalopods like squid and cuttlefish. Their vibrant displays of signals call for territorial standoffs, mating, and warnings. Squids can also change color, like you've probably seen in cartoons, to give different hues of color to enemies and allies. The same goes with octopuses, who use camouflage as a means of stealth and communication. How crazy is nature? And so, from sea creatures flashing lights to bees dancing their words out, those were surprising ways animals communicate with each other.